Nations with access to the F-35 are ordering dozens of F-16s instead. Bulgaria chose 16 Block 70 Vipers over newer alternatives. Slovakia signed its largest defense contract in history for 14 of these aircraft. Taiwan ordered 66. These countries can buy F-35s, yet they're spending billions on what critics call outdated technology. The F-16 first flew in 1974. That's 50 years of continuous production. So why are air forces around the world choosing a half-century-old design when fifth-generation fighters exist? The answer reveals an engineering transformation that fundamentally changed what a legacy airframe can accomplish. Welcome to Flight Deck. The F-16 Block 70 represents the most advanced version of the Fighting Falcon ever built, and what Lockheed Martin accomplished with this upgrade challenges assumptions about aircraft modernization. This isn't incremental improvement. The Block 70 package integrates technologies that give a fourth-generation airframe capabilities matching platforms designed three decades later. The transformation starts with the APG-83 AESA radar. Active electronically scanned array technology fundamentally differs from the mechanically scanned radars that earlier F-16 variants used. Previous radar systems physically rotated a dish to sweep airspace, creating detection gaps and limiting tracking capability. The APG-83 uses thousands of independent transmit-receive modules that scan electronically, enabling simultaneous air-to-air -air and air-to-ground operations without physical movement. The engineering advantage becomes clear when examining actual performance metrics. Northrop Grumman designed the APG-83 with 70% hardware commonality and 95% software commonality with F-35 and F-22 radar systems. That software sharing means the Block 70 processes radar returns using algorithms developed for fifth-generation fighters. Detection range exceeds legacy mechanically scanned radars by factors measured in tens of miles. More importantly, the AESA simultaneously tracks multiple targets while mapping ground terrain, something mechanically scanned systems cannot accomplish. Test pilot Ryan Blake, who flies Block 70 aircraft for Lockheed Martin, describes the operational difference. With earlier F-16 blocks using mechanical radar, contacts appeared suddenly once they entered detection range. Pilots had seconds to assess threats and respond. The APG-83 detects targets before they become threats, giving pilots minutes to analyze tactical situations and develop engagement strategies. That temporal advantage translates directly to survival in contested airspace. The AESA capabilities extend beyond simple detection. Synthetic aperture radar mapping provides ground resolution matching targeting pods enabling precision strike operations without external sensors. The radar interleaves air-to-air -air search modes with ground mapping, maintaining 360-degree threat awareness while prosecuting surface targets. This multitasking capability required fundamental software architecture changes that previous F-16 variants could never support. The Block 70 cockpit integration demonstrates how hardware upgrades multiply when properly implemented. Earlier F-16 variants featured two 4-inch by 4-inch displays flanking the heads-up display. The Block 70 adds a 6-inch by 8-inch center pedestal display that fundamentally changes how pilots interact with aircraft systems. That additional screen real estate enables simultaneous presentation of tactical data targeting imagery and flight information without menu cycling or display switching. The center display presents high-resolution synthetic aperture radar maps alongside targeting pod video. Pilots zoom and manipulate imagery without changing display modes or interrupting other sensor operations. Color-moving maps integrate real-time tactical data from Link 16 data links showing friendly positions, threat locations, and mission objectives on a single integrated picture. This information fusion reduces cognitive workload while improving situational awareness. The mission computer powering these displays represents another generational leap. 
Modern processors handle data throughput that earlier F16 variants couldn't approach. The new architecture supports advanced sensor fusion, electronic warfare integration, and weapon system coordination that legacy computers lacked processing power to execute. Software updates that would require hardware replacement on older blocks install seamlessly on Block 70 systems through standardized interfaces. The Viper Shield Electronic Warfare Suite integrates capabilities that earlier F-16s required external pods to provide. L3 Harris designed this fully digital system specifically for Block 70, combining radar warning receivers with active jamming capabilities in a compact internal package. The digital architecture processes threat libraries and implements countermeasures faster than analog systems that dominated previous generations. The radar warning receiver technology demonstrates the advancement. Digital processing enables threat identification and prioritization that analog systems approximated through lookup tables and preset responses. The Block 70 system correlates multiple radar emissions, determines threat priority based on engagement geometry and capability, and implements appropriate countermeasures automatically. Pilots receive actionable warnings rather than raw sensor data requiring interpretation under stress. The integration with APG-83 radar creates synergistic effects that separate systems cannot achieve. The AESA radar detects and tracks threats while the Electronic Warfare Suite simultaneously jams hostile sensors and implements deception techniques. This coordinated response presents adversaries with conflicting information across multiple frequencies while denying accurate targeting data. Earlier F-16s required manual coordination between radar operators and electronic warfare officers to accomplish similar effects with reduced effectiveness. Structural upgrades supporting Block 70 operations ensure these advanced systems remain viable through 2060 and beyond. Lockheed Martin redesigned critical airframe components to extend service life to 12,000 flight hours, representing more than 50% increase over previous F-16 variants. This structural reinforcement required analysis of fatigue-critical areas and implementation of enhanced manufacturing techniques that previous production blocks didn't incorporate. The extended service life calculation factors in modern operational tempos and mission profiles that early F-16 designers never anticipated. Contemporary fighter operations involve higher G-loading during air combat maneuvering, increased weapons carriage creating asymmetric loading conditions, and prolonged low-altitude high-speed flight profiles that accelerate structural fatigue. Block 70 airframe modifications address these factors through material upgrades, enhanced inspection procedures, and proactive replacement of life-limited components. Economic implications of 12,000-hour service life fundamentally alter procurement calculus. A Block 70 purchased today enters service knowing it will remain operationally viable into the 2060s with proper maintenance. That 40-year service span amortizes acquisition costs across decades of operational capability, making the $70 million unit cost extremely competitive against alternatives requiring replacement within shorter timeframes. The Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System represents life-saving technology that previous F-16 variants lacked. This computer system continuously monitors aircraft altitude, attitude, and flight path, calculating controlled flight into terrain risk in real time. When the system determines the pilot cannot recover from current trajectory, it assumes control and executes automatic recovery maneuvers. The operational record validates this capability. As of June 2022, Auto GKS had saved 11 pilots and 10 aircraft from certain loss through automatic intervention. These incidents occurred during combat maneuvering, instrument approaches, and spatial disorientation scenarios where pilots lost situational awareness or became task-saturated. 
In each case, the system recognized impending ground collision before the pilot and executed recovery procedures that prevented fatal impact. The psychological impact of auto GCAS extends beyond documented saves. Pilots operate with reduced cognitive burden knowing that catastrophic spatial disorientation or momentary attention lapses won't result in fatal ground impact. This confidence enables more aggressive maneuvering during combat training and operations, improving overall force effectiveness while reducing training attrition. International sales demonstrate global confidence in Block 70 capabilities. Taiwan's 66 aircraft order represents the largest F-16 procurement in decades, replacing aging Mirage 2000 and F-5 fighters with modern multi-role platforms. The Taiwan deal includes complete modernization packages ensuring these aircraft match or exceed capabilities of potential adversaries in the region. Greece converted its existing F-16 fleet with 84 upgrade kits, bringing older Block 40 and Block 50 aircraft to Block 72 standard. This upgrade approach provides fifth-generation radar capabilities and modern avionics at fraction of new aircraft acquisition costs. The Greek Air Force maintains numerical strength while incorporating technologies that fundamentally change how their fighters operate in contested environments. Slovakia and Bulgaria both selected Block 70 as their first Western fighter acquisition, replacing Soviet-era MiG-29 platforms with NATO-compatible systems. These purchases demonstrate confidence in F-16 sustainability and upgrade potential. Both nations evaluated alternatives including late-model European designs before choosing Lockheed Martin's offering based on capability, supportability, and life cycle costs. The foreign military sales pipeline extends through the 2030s, with additional orders expected as nations evaluate fourth-generation plus capabilities against fifth-generation acquisition costs. The Block 70 package provides performance approaching fifth-generation platforms at roughly 40% of F-35 procurement costs, enabling larger fleet sizes and improved readiness through parts commonality with existing F-16 operators. The operational flexibility that Block 70 enables changes how Air Force's plan force structure. The United States Air Force initiated upgrades of over 600 Block 40 and Block 50 aircraft to Block 70 standard, ensuring legacy Vipers remain combat effective through the 2040s. This modernization preserves institutional knowledge and training infrastructure while incorporating capabilities that extend platform relevance. Combat radius and weapons carriage demonstrate Block 70 versatility. Conformal fuel tanks provide additional range without external fuel tank drag penalties, extending operational reach while maintaining hardpoint availability for weapons. The weapons integration capability spans 180 different store types across 3,300 certified carriage configurations. This flexibility enables mission adaptation without lengthy integration programs or capability limitations. The engine options, supporting Block 70 operations, reflect operator preferences and existing logistical infrastructure. Block 70 aircraft equipped with General Electric F110 GE129 engines produce 29,500 pounds thrust, while Block 72 variants with Pratt & Whitney F100 PW229 engines generate 29,160 pounds thrust. Both power plants support super cruise-like performance and provide thrust margins enabling sustained high-G maneuvering at combat weights. The strategic implications of Block 70 capabilities extend beyond individual aircraft performance. A modernized F-16 fleet operating with AESA radars, advanced electronic warfare, and data link integration creates networked combat power that multiplies effectiveness beyond simple platform counts. Four Block 70 fighters sharing tactical information through Link 16 data links present adversaries with tracking problems that individual aircraft cannot generate. The sensor fusion enabled by modern mission computers and high bandwidth data links creates composite tactical pictures exceeding what any single platform detects. 
one aircraft detecting threats with its radar, while another monitors electronic emissions, and a third tracks infrared signatures creates multi-phenomenology awareness that confuses hostile sensor correlation algorithms. This networked approach to air combat leverages Block 70 technology integration to achieve effects previously requiring dedicated specialized platforms. Cost effectiveness remains the dominant factor driving Block 70 adoption. Nations operating existing F-16 fleets upgrade to Block 70 standard for $20 to $30 million per aircraft, obtaining fifth-generation sensors and avionics while retaining proven airframes and existing support infrastructure. New Block 70 purchases at $70 million provide capabilities approaching F-35 performance in specific mission sets while maintaining lower operating costs and higher readiness rates. The 60-plus year F-16 production run demonstrates adaptability that few aircraft designs achieve. The same basic airframe that first flew in 1974 now carries sensors and systems that didn't exist when engineers designed the original aircraft. This upgrade potential stems from fundamental design decisions emphasizing modular systems, accessible maintenance, and growth capacity that enable technology insertion across generations. So why are nations with F-35 access ordering F-16 Block 70 Vipers instead? Because $70 million buys an aircraft with ISA radar sharing F-35 software algorithms. Because 12,000-hour service life means 40 years of operational capability. Because Auto GCAS has already saved 11 pilots and 10 aircraft from certain loss because 180 weapon types across 3,000 certified configurations provide mission flexibility that specialized platforms cannot match. The Block 70 represents what systematic technology insertion accomplishes when engineers prioritize capability over replacement. Rather than declaring legacy airframes obsolete, Lockheed Martin demonstrated that properly executed modernization creates platforms competing effectively against designs three decades newer. The result proves that airframe age matters less than sensor capability, computer processing power, and systems integration when determining combat effectiveness. What surprised you most about Block 70 capabilities? The radar commonality with F-35, the 12,000-hour service life, or the Auto GCAS life-saving record? Let me know in the comments. If you want more deep dives into military aviation technology and capabilities, subscribe to Flight Deck. Until next time, remember that 40-year-old airframes with 21st century technology often outperform platforms designed for previous wars.